Right, we're back with Villaincast. I believe this might be episode 10 now, so I'm not sure if uh, there's some sort of celebration I'm supposed to do that I've managed to hit 10 episodes of content. Um, quick shout out to the sponsors first. Still no sponsors. <laughs> Omid actually like, joked about this in the last episode saying, I've kind of like put myself in a hole now that I keep making this joke. And I'm like, I'll keep making this joke. I still find it funny. Maybe because I'm a dad and dad jokes are like, hilarious to me. Um, <laughs> so this is Reap the Week with El Jefe, not El Jeff, as I accidentally <laughs> once thought. Hey, Nack. Hi. <laughs> um, so this week, uh, I've been having a good think about uh, content to put through, especially after the conversation with Omid uh, on the last episode. If you haven't checked out that episode, uh, please go check it out, uh, either by the exact same way you were listening to this, or if you fancy a change, Spotify or YouTube or something else. Um, and he raised the idea that he has a specific uh, blueprint that all his students have to know before they go on to like blue belt, purple belt or anything else, because he wants to have that kind of base knowledge to, to be able to explain everything he does in the future. And I know most gyms have this. So um, there's a like, there's always been the conversations of like, is there, should there be a syllabus for jujitsu from a traditional kind of standpoint or a curriculum, et cetera, that people have to like exam to get blue belt. Um, Every gym obviously has a criteria for blue belt. Uh, but then look at it from a different perspective. What tools would you give a white belt? Would I give a white belt? Would anyone give a white belt to make uh, learning jujitsu easier? As in, here are all the things that explain jujitsu. Uh, this will kind of set you instead for the rest of your jujitsu career. What would I want a white belt to have? to make that happen outside of technique. Because you can all say, you know, if you're on your, on your first days of jiu-jitsu, what are your first guards, open guard, closed guard, half guard, whatever, or you need to know side control, mount. Um, but what would set jiu-jitsu up to actually be a um, easier martial art to learn instead of just these disparate te uh, techniques? So just before the episode started, I had a conversation with Naki and I, I, I said this to him like this is what i'm going to be going through today um he kind of listed off all the things that i've kind of written down uh this will be a video series that will be appearing on the uh youtube channel um in the not too distant future uh there'll be about five six seven episodes uh, you'll be able to roughly figure out what they are from listening to the rest of this podcast but i'll be going into greater deal deal with those um in each of those upcoming videos uh, okay then, so hey Nak, uh, what would you say then? Uh, part one, day one, white belt rocks up in the gym, like, you know, hasn't done anything before. How do you explain jujitsu? Oh, we talked about this before, didn't we? We said the space number one, knee and armpit. Space even before that, two. even before that. Even before that. that. Even like, before so that. someone has accidentally. Yeah. Uh, got confused and come in on the wrong night. So Monday night was supposed to be karate, but they've come in on Tuesday <laughs> and it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu night. And they're like, what the hell is happening in here? I think this is an important question because if you don't actually, if you can't actually explain to someone what Jiu-Jitsu is, right, you can explain karate, you can explain boxing. Boxing is the art of punching someone in the face and not getting punched in the face yourself. Thai boxing is the exact same, but doing it with your feet and your hands. Um, <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu. How would you explain to that person who's just rocked up? What is jujitsu? It's the art of taking them down. Well, it's grappling, ain't it? Taking them down. We've done this four step process. We talked about it before, haven't we? Yes. Um, and it's, you know, take them down, get yep. past their legs, because obviously it's, they, that's their strongest part of their body. Uh, pin them, control them, and then eventually submission. Yes. Um, go deeper then. Why? Yeah. I know Danaher, I think, I, again, I've probably stolen this from Danaher or Ryan yeah. Hall or some other great thinker of jiu-jitsu. Uh, and I am trying to uh, sell myself as just as <laughs> equally great. I have just stolen these things. Um, so why, though? Why, why do we take them down? Why do we do, do, do jiu-jitsu? Why don't we just do it from standing? Why don't we just wrestle? Why don't we just do standing chokes? 
So they can't punch you <laughs> or kick you. No, they can still punch and kick you on the ground. Well, not as effectively. You take the mobility away. That's the thing. Uh, they can't yes. move. So that's why we do jiu-jitsu. We, that's why we fight on the ground is because you have taken away the majority of someone's athleticism. So yes. taking that then to that day one, in you come, white belt who's thinking, this is a weird karate. They don't punch <laughs> each other. Um, they wear the same clothes. Uh, and they're like, well, why are you doing what you're doing? I'm like, well, jujitsu is uh, a way of, of limiting, not removing. That's why we have weight categories. That's why it still has sport aspects. Mm. But limiting the other person's athleticism. Because as soon as they hit the deck, their mobility and strength decreases so you, you make the fight more fair i think that's a fair way of, of defining yeah. what we do yeah um what do you say next get past the legs yes get past the yes. legs guard pass or whatever we we call it why do we pass the legs because it's the strongest part of the body and obviously guard you can wrap them up take them down sweep them you can stand up yourself as well so yeah, well, there's that's a number the, of ways they can attack you. They can go kick you as well. <laughs> that's the interesting part is that this is like a conversation I had. Uh, I prefaced uh, this with Naki before the before we started recording about how I had a conversation recently with a, a white belt uh, about a four step program of understanding jujitsu and how to progress with it. So exactly the, the four steps that Naki is referring to is like part one, take them down. Part two, pass the most dangerous part of the body. Because even in a fight aspect, up kicks exist, kicks exist, and it's the most powerful part of the body that's going to do the most damage. That's why getting past the legs matters so much. Then you go through a hierarchy of pins. Exactly. You go through a hierarchy of controls that allows you to punch the other person in the face. Side control, not as much. Knee on belly, mount. You start to go more and more nuts, uh, raining knuckles. Um, you then get to a point where you can submit them. Um, yeah, that's that's jujitsu. I think if you were to explain that to someone who walked in the door, they'd have a pretty good bead on what's about to happen to them. Um, which, as odd as it sounds, like if if you think back to anyone listening to this, I say this in a rhetorical way. If you think back to when you first started playing this game, did you actually think that? Was that something at the forefront of your head about why you're actually doing this? Probably not. Probably it definitely wasn't mine up until I was about a purple belt. <laughs> I was like, I'm just doing, just doing this, and it seems to be fun. Um, but I think if I'd known that from the beginning, and I have seen the results of this when I've explained it, jujitsu changes automatically. Um, and this is uh, I'll we'll cover onto the one, two, three, four in a minute. Um, so we've gone to what and why is jujitsu. Uh, what would be the next? So we've explained to this person, right, this is what's going to happen. This is why we're doing it to you. Uh, what would be the next thing you explain to them? Well, as in sparring or just straight no, no, into no, the... just like just explaining to you, like this white belt toolbox. Like, so well, they've got know... a first. Yeah, they, they now know what they needs to be done, but you have to explain to them that they've got to learn to defend first. <laughs> yes. Defend yes. first, because they won't know any attacks, you know, and they're going to roll, they're going to roll with someone. They're going to come for them, you know, they're going to roll and they're going to, they're going to be on the offense. And if you've got no idea how to defend, then you're struck, you're going to, you're going to get choked. You're going to get on board. You're going to get, you know, all sorts of done to you. It's going to suck. Yeah. You're going to have a bad um, night. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And I think uh, this is why a lot of people get put off on these first nights. I think that's why the rotation rate in jiu-jitsu is not that high. You, you can only the savages stay around, you know. Yeah, I think this is something that me and Omid said is that you can't know who the, the the people who are going to be sticking around and getting more like the higher belts, like brown belts and black belts are, because those are the people who like shatter their finger and then like tie yeah. it up and then carry on rolling, or they get injured and they just appear in the next class with like a cast on and they're just sitting there <laughs> watching. Like that, you can't extricate them from jujitsu they will be there no matter what and i'm not mean like you know because you know people can be addicted to jujitsu at their first couple of years like white belts and blue belts but these are like lunatics that like three four five years in still get smashed up and go i'm not missing class don't be silly <laughs> um 
maybe that's just us though because we have an nhs in this country that allows us to do that <laughs> <laughs> like, uh i'm pretty sure if we had injuries that could make it worse and it cost us i don't think we'd be as a uh, mm. as flippant with it um but yeah how you need to know how to but what is a defense i don't mean and this is like the important part is i'm trying to stick away from uh technical information here um just given like the technical uh, not the, the technical the conceptual understanding of everything that's going to be explained to them in the future and like like he said uh how to defend what's coming to you so it's not shrimping and, and and specific framings and stuff like that it's like what constitutes control yeah how do i stop that from happening um and uh plug 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 uh my how to defend everything video is still out it still uh gets loads of views and definitely check that one out if you want interested but i'll do another video explaining it anyway soon um but yeah how to make it not hurt as much and that's one of the fun things is that since jujitsu is, is control first and foremost on the ground if you can stop people getting those control points you know into your armpits behind your head behind your knees um you can pretty much take anyone like beginner day one like tie them up into a ball and leave them on the floor and they'll survive jujitsu. Which is hilarious that this martial art we've spent so much money and time investing into that can be shut down by someone just pretending to be an armadillo. <laughs> um, that's annoying. Uh, what's next? What would you say, Nack? What would you say? So, because I know you, you, you obviously have your own students and your own little gym that you can have bring people into the world with this and i think you have a bigger intake than i do uh <laughs> influx so i'm interested in I, I actually like it's it's funny that we didn't really talk much about the order or or the exact points i was going to go through in this before the show started but it's mm. amazing how we both just come out instantly at the exact same list yeah <laughs> almost like i've i've beaten this into naki over time um, <laughs> yes next point what would you so say the two point well the main parts that we need to defend so obviously the knee and armpit space yeah number one and the space between the heel and the glutes heel mm -hmm. and bum uh explain what guard is yeah okay yeah that's an interesting one so mm -hmm. how do you explain guard so guard is obviously you're going to use your legs and arms well you got to explain to them that they have got gravity on their side you need to use the tools that you've got, so your hands and legs, uh, sweep, or leg lock, or attempt, you know, attempt leg lock and try sweep them. Um, uh, understanding of inside and outside guards. Um, and... I, think you, I think you touched on it a little bit there. Um, okay. So not going into the... the uh, it just feels weird. It feels like almost like an exam for you. Like, this is like your Batman exam for me. Like, yeah. Like, no, no, I'm just curious, like, how you, how you go about it. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, one thing I'd add into that is, is why do we have guard? So that you can't get punched in the face easily. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it, 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 um, it stops them like coming the above your hips, which is the control that they need. So, you know, your legs will, as long as your legs are in the way, you can keep framing and you've still got a chance to survive. Um, to I try and come up. I think it goes back into that kind of uh, core understanding of what jujitsu is, as in it's a, it's a way of evening the score. Mm. So we take people down because we even the score and, and make it more equal when it comes to physicality. Um, but when uh, you're on the floor and you're underneath someone, then shit has hit the fan. Yeah. Uh, so how do you even fight at that point if you can't use physicality? Um, this is like a foreshadowing for the something later on in the uh, podcast. <laughs> um, is we have a guard because you have even the score by increasing the number of weapons um, facing that other person. So again, this like day one white belt who's rocked up and trying to explain the core ideas of jujitsu. We've gone through what we why we're doing what we're doing, how to stop it from happening to you, ball up. Um, and then and the idea that we have this guard, which is if you can't ball up, increase the number of weapons you have to even the score against their natural attributes of uh, mass, gravity, 
and mobility. They've got those. We don't have those. If you're underneath, you do not have those. So you have to even the fight, you increase your weapon load from two to four. You increase your leg, you use your legs. But also puts them back down. And this is a, something else I want to go on to. I'm definitely going to make a longer video with this one. Is this one, two, three, four aspect. So take leg locks out of the situation for a moment. Look at it as, as pristine jujitsu. Um, not saying that leg locks isn't pristine jujitsu. I like. I know. I was just. I was about to have a fit then. <laughs> yeah. So like reach for the screen and strangle me. Um, where was I? One, two, three, four. Yes. Ah, oh, took, me, took me completely <laughs> out of it then. Um, is that in a jujitsu way? You, if you're attacking, you want to go up the numbers. It's almost like as soon as you solidify a number, you do not go back down. You do not go back down in numbers. Um, so if you take someone down, you do not let them back up. You then work for number two, which is your guard pass. Um, you can you can like get a, like a, a soft two. You can work on your two, as long as you do not give up the one to let the two happen. Two happens, you get the guard pass. So you're in side control or whatever. You do not give up uh, your two to increase position two or four to, and then as soon as you get like your your solidified you know pre-submission control you do not allow yourself to uh give up that um control you've already built uh to then um get the submission like the stupidest thing in the world is like i think arm bars are stupid as fuck <laughs> <laughs> controversial decision here Arm bars and leg locks are stupid as fuck in a traditional jiu-jitsu kind of sense. I know they work. I use them all the time. But for beginners, when you try and like explain why jiu-jitsu works and why they should kind of stick to this like protocol, leg lock in general, that's fine. Like eventually, you know, day one, day two, your hook. Um, but this idea of, of, you know, especially if you want to win uh, convincingly in competition, et cetera, do not allow anything that allows you to go back down number. Do not go for a shitty mount take that allows your leg to get caught. Do not go for an arm bar or a leg lock that requires your back to hit the floor. Because if you fuck up, you have literally gone back down to minus numbers. Yeah. Ugh, Brief. Stupid as fuck. Um, I think we can both we both agree on that. Like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. When, when we spar, competition, yeah. Well, no, whenever we've sparred, like in the gym, like. It has to be if I know, if I'm going for a leg lock on you, I have to know full well that I am not going to give up anything I've already <laughs> gained. So if I'm at like a, a minus two because I've got guard on you, um, I, I have to know that leg lock's going to work and it isn't going to result in my guard being passed. Because <laughs> the stupidest thing in the world would be for me to go for that, get my guard passed, and then I'm at minus three. Yeah. Like that, I think that has to be like again a core white belt tool. Like you have to have that. You have to have this understanding that you you forwards only. And unless you know it's a guaranteed 100% um, in the bad cast submission, like you can always practice, you know, sp rolling and, sp and competition sparring are two different things. Um, yeah. Roll to practice and play, sp competition sparring to murder and, and improve in that way. Um, but I think, especially when it comes to that kind of competition sparring, you have to have that one, two, three, four. You have to have, I'm not going back down. Because otherwise, what the hell is it all for? I 100%. think that's, that should be in the white belt toolbox. Yeah, 100%. That, slide that one in. Um, yeah, so guard. Yes. That's important. And that's why we have it. What's next? What would you give in this white belt toolbox? After guard. Yeah. Ooh, uh, running man. Explain. From, from a, a non-technical expect non perspective. So you haven't okay. given any technique out. What concept would that be? So do not be flat. Yeah. Actually, no, I didn't I didn't put that one in mind. Oh damn. What? Yeah. what? <laughs> don't put the oh no, I can't have yeah. Cash in a different yeah. Yeah. But no, don't be flat. No, completely. Don't be flat. Don't be flat. Um Oh wow! I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. And put that in my toolbox. Uh, why? Why not be flat? 
because if you're not flat, you're being pinned uh, and pressure works better when you're pinned. So you're going to suffer more. Um, your mobility decreases big time when your shoulders yes. are pinned. Oh, no, I wouldn't say it's shoulders are pinned. I'd say it's hips are pinned. Well, hips and shoulders, because it's the both ends of the spine. Yeah, you can't you can't rotate one without the other. Yeah, like, not fully. <laughs> well, when we play the when we talk about the cross axes, that when we play side control, it's always controlling yeah. one shoulder and one hip, ain't it? On a yeah, diagonal yeah. axis. Well, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I thought you should say that. I don't actually practice that idea. I probably practice it in a different way. Mm. That must be something that you and Alex work on. Um, possibly, possibly, because I look at it in the sense of um, there's three. Uh, rotation points of the spine and all three have to turn for you to roll mm. over so head shoulders and hips mm. um, and all three have to go in the exact same direction for a, a, a turn to happen and if one is going the wrong way the turn can't happen yeah so yeah probably the exact same idea how you say cross axis but i probably just include, include the head as well mm. uh, and just like try and find two out of three for control. Or actually, no, actually, this is an interesting one. One out of three is actually quite good for me as well, mm. because at least then I've dictated the direction I know you're going to go. Yeah. Date. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Don't be flat, because uh, if you're flat, your legs don't work. Simple as that. Now, if I ask anyone to, to lie flat on their back and then stand up, you will come to one side first, guaranteed, Yeah. because your legs only work that way. It's like um, the technical get-up is the most prime example of that. If you, should, yeah. if you were to demonstrate a technical get-up, you know, to get up effectively without being punched yeah. or kicked in the face. You have to go up sideways. So, yeah. well, no, it's just in general, if I ask a human being to stand up and from like lying flat, they roll to their side first and one yeah. leg comes underneath. They can't just like rise straight up like a zombie coming out of a, like a vampire coming <laughs> out of a coffin. Um, and so, yeah, exactly. Don't be flat. I think that's, that should be definitely in the white belt toolbox. Definitely. I'll, I'll add that into my list of videos to do. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what next? What else would you put in the white belt toolbox? Uh, what a joint submission is, or how to perform a joint submission. Yes. Why? Honest to God, I must have had some sort of like brain fart when I wrote these, because I didn't even put that one in. <laughs> Or choke. <laughs> that would have been really helpful. I do do these things, but uh, yeah, yeah. What's the joint submission? Um, yeah. Completely. Uh, how do you explain that then? So obviously, to, to control, to get the submission, your joint submission you want, you've got to control the joint above and below uh, for the one you want. So if you want an armbar, you've got to control the wrist and the shoulder. And that's for the attacker. So as a defense you know, if you reverse engineer that, you'd think, okay, if I am in an bar situation, if I don't give them one control, then I can get out. So you, you're killing two birds with one stone. I think actually that kind of leads on to something else really important. And this is like definitely, definitely something that would be in the white belt toolbox is understanding the difference between a joint submission and a minor control position. I think I stole that term from Charles, who probably got it from somewhere else, mm. is that um and when people think of leg locks they think of the whole thing they think of the moment that you grab hold of the leg is a submission it's not it's the exact same with the arm bar as in you you get hold of you sit with your legs across their face and chest and you have hold of their arm and then it's that's the arm bar but i think you have to be able to separate that into two distinct parts Part one is the control position. Part two is once the limb is fully outstretched and it's locking position, that's the submission. And I think it's yeah. important to understand the, the difference between the two because, because it's seen as one solid structural bit of information. It's kind of like you have to go all the way to the end. Like you get, you get into the arm bar, the leg lock position, you have to finish and you get sloppy. And it's like, and then people escape them, and, and it's probably one of the worst parts when you're new at jiu-jitsu. I'd say it matters more to get the positional, minor control position, as in the arm, the, the wrap around the arm or the wrap around the leg, and hold it, be able to ride with it, as in no matter what someone does, you keep that without submitting them. 
Yeah, um, it lets you go to different positions as well, usually. You know, you yeah, it's, it's, it, it can be as transitional as any other position, but yeah. like learning how to bite onto someone's arm, not like <laughs> teeth. Yeah, you're going to confuse some people there. I have to specify there. that. No biting white belts. Um, but no, actually like being able to, to create that bite uh, with your yeah. legs or your arms onto their limb that no matter what they do, they can't get rid of you because then the submission will always come. Now, if you can like just, and that's like one of the fun things about when you play leg locks is that if you can create a really decent bite on someone's leg and they could be rolling around all over the place and it actually then changes how you perceive. Wow, that picked up really well on your microphone. Is that a motorbike going past your house? Yeah. I heard that really clearly. Um, oh, your picture's frozen. Yeah, so is yours. Oh. I wonder if the video's frozen. Your audio's fine still. Oh, okay, carry on then. Oh, it's the oh video. there we go, we're back. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was actually, would actually increase probably um, the uh, ease and, and happiness that people would actually feel about submissions is that when you get stuck in an armbar or a, a leg lock, if you look at it from a traditional way of, of like, this is a solid piece of information, the second you end up in an armbar or a leg lock, you get panicked and you kind of stop thinking too much about the defense of the position. You think more about, I need to watch out, he's about to break my arm or leg. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. when it comes to leg locks, it makes them very frightening. But I think if you were to roll with the idea that it's a minor control, it's a position, not a, like a side control or a mount, it's a position of the limb. And people can roll like that and hold and, and maintain control like that. And you can actually work the defenses from there. I think you'd realize they're not actually that scary, especially with leg locks. Because as soon as like someone gets ashy or like 411, people are like, oh, no, I need to tap, you know. And they're afraid to move, afraid to roll. And that then makes people afraid to do a submission because they think people are going to like spaz out and, and have their limbs broken. Um, but I think if you can actually then learn like how to move effectively, I think it like take away a lot of that fear, like how to to latch onto someone and realize that no, they can actually move around quite freely whilst I have onto their leg and no damage is going to be caused because it's not a submission yet. Um, I think that's that's definitely something to go into white belt toolbox is this idea of uh, what is a minor control position as well as a major control position. What is the control of the limb and not the body and how to actually maintain those. Um, and separating out those joint joint submissions because I the best ones are Kimura. Now, I yeah, for control, use yeah. Kimuras all the damn time, but yeah. not for submissions. Um, I use it just to hold on to someone and and keep them in control as I do something else to them. It's not their wrist lock because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's an important one. Definitely in the white belt toolbox. Um, what else would you put in there? Uh, well, well, how to choke or what is a choke? What kind of chokes there are? So you've got the arm in chokes. You've got normal chokes without the arms in. Uh, yeah, what's a choke? Exp yeah, explain the concepts and then uh, how to defend it. Well, the defense, obviously, again, same thing. You know, to choke, they need your shoulders flat with the, uh, the their back and your chest. If mm -hmm. you can get your shoulder into their sternum, they're not choking you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's that idea of what what is, and I think this is the nomenclature issue, as in strangles and chokes, because I think actually what we do are strangles, mm. like officially in the wet in the dictionary. I've got my phone next to me. Maybe I should look it up. Um, I might talk as I'm like doing both of these things. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure a strangle is a blood uh, constriction, and a choke is an air constriction. But for some reason, we we get them the wrong way around okay it might be wrong with these things but i think it's just because strangling someone sounds way worse yeah it does um, <laughs> no, not sure um i'm gonna look at that and probably there's something i heard in the in the past i think i got confused but mm. uh yeah maybe but yeah understanding what the the two what the differences are between air and blood yeah because again if you just if you just think your neck is this this terrible thing that you shouldn't have someone uh, mutilate, then you're not going to understand the difference. <laughs> um, but yeah, completely. Um, and else would you put in your in your uh, toolbox for a white belt? 
put a white belt. You'd have to, uh, do, do, do. I don't know. What have you got there? Because I've put some in that you haven't got on your list. What have you got that I haven't said? I've got two that haven't come up. Okay. First one, what is the pocket? To a white belt. Oh, actually, yeah, it makes sense yeah. to a white belt. Well, range. Range, yeah, but... The importance of range, that, that where the distances are, the danger is. Because there's a distance where it's too far and there's no danger. There's a distance where it's too close and um, you are in danger. And then there's a middle distance where you can then dictate who is in danger. Well, it's hand fighting, though, isn't it? Because that's the one I would have said. I think it's the same thing. Well, it's yeah, could, yeah, yeah. it's the same thing in it, really. Yeah, but I think you have to understand that, oh, uh, well, not you, you know, but the, the proverbial you, the, the white belt, uh, yeah. has to understand this idea that there is a distance. Like, I think if you don't explain that idea, that, and if you just show technique, uh, like, you know, breaking their posture, then go for a guillotine yeah. or a triangle or some shit from close guard. That takes away the idea that there was a pocket that had to be fought there. Mm. And I think if you don't have that idea that, and this is why, again, why, why do we, um, this actually goes to my next one. You, can, you can't see the screen, but this is why these two things are really close together, is that you have um, a pocket where there's no danger, there's all the danger, and then there's who decides the danger, which is the hand fighting distance, and then there's jab cross. Yes. Which can be seen in a couple of ways. As in, you know, you can either take, say, you know, especially from a guard perspective, take, say, take yourself all the way out of danger, posture. But if you have to be broken down, break down into it and control it there, which is the, the jab to the cross. But then I think that's also just in general, like, just understand that anything you do, there's an opposite to it. I think there's an important part for these to be told to a white belt. Yeah. As in, if you see a shrimp, there is a turtle. If there is a uh posture there's a stack and that's not just some guard but from from back control as well um uh i think those things need to be put across as well that don't just settle on you are stuck with this like you're going to get techniques taught to you there's always an opposite technique that you can do i think if you're not told that i think you're you have very linear yeah, a lot of people get stuck that this is the answer and that's it. You know, if you can yes. get out to that mindset and think, there's always another thing. There's always I can. So there's there's an answer somewhere, and I've got to get the timing or something. But there's an answer somewhere. I think yeah. if you have that mindset, you will find more things and you'll be more comfortable in your jujitsu. I think if you had all these tools as a white belt, I think jujitsu would be a hell of a lot easier. But I think oh, there's yeah. a lot of information there. I think that's one of the wise, one of the hardest belts. Is that I think if you had all this. And this is kind of the goal of it. If you had all these tools, it means getting a blue belt would be way easier because everything you have kind of falls into these categories. Mm. I think these are like maybe month one concepts. I think they can go into a bit deeper as in uh, about, um, about leverage and about climbing the limbs and about um, sweep theory and all those other like cool things that we do passing theory i think they'd be like first year concepts but like month one like survival toolbox like welcome to the gym here you go here's your gear here's your toolbox yeah. i think those would be the ones that you'd have to give them Never. um maybe you like, should make some sort of pamphlet um <laughs> when, people, <laughs> when people start like or maybe you like oh why a pamphlet they cost money why not just make some sort of video series on YouTube that we can just direct them to and say, like, if you study this, dude, I might actually do that. Because obviously I'm trying to, like, do the beginner course right now. Um, yeah. And we've got, like, all these beginners signing up. I may just make the video series, obviously for people watching this, and then just send them, like, the beginner course, I'll send them to this page and say, look, know all these things, everything will be fine for you when you start. Yeah. Good this idea. kind of goes back to did we say this before or after the video? Before we started recording or after? I think we said before we started recording. Um, no, we did. Okay, I won't spoil it. <laughs> Wait. Um, it was about the, uh, the downloading into the Matrix. Um, <laughs> I think, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, that makes no sense to anyone listening to this. Uh, it's because we, me and Naki are probably talking for about 15 minutes before this started and now I press record and so uh, now some conversation i just forget what we spoke about <laughs> um hmm, yeah uh 
where was I? Matrix. Matrix, yeah. No, it's the idea that you could have these, these bits of information here that are nothing to do with physicality, that you could just give to someone on the internet. Like, take these into your first jujitsu class. You feel better. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, especially since we're gonna be opening up in the not too distant future with the relaxing of, of and the, the receding of COVID. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna prepare this, and then everyone who like signs up, especially like the the couple of dozen, however many it is we've already had, I'm gonna like go to this. You'll understand jujitsu more. Yeah, it'll but, be good to see the result. After yeah, definitely, done. definitely. I might have to put it on the uh, Discord channel about how it goes in the future. Yeah. And also just like get their points of view because uh, I did ask this question prior to us recording like what belts people are. I was surprised we have black belts on there listening to me. Why? Oh, we had we had some uh, uh, that uh, guy who was like I was trained with Frank Shamrock or something. I was like, what? I don't know why are you Is listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, okay. Um, I, I'm I made making everything up as I go along. Uh, <laughs> Going on to that Discord channel then. Uh, this is this this Reap the Week uh, series of podcasts that we do. It's like us chatting every week about new ideas that we have about jujitsu. But also then um, we ask questions on the Discord channel. Please go on there. There'll be there's links everywhere. I literally link to that on everything we do with regards to like this channel and stuff. <laughs> um, go on to ask questions because I, I do kind of pay attention. Um, it's getting bigger. Uh, and I then take these inf- these things and uh, we talk uh, on the Reap the Week. Uh, or I'll just answer them now and then. <clears throat> so, the first one then. Best at-home exercises that you have for jiu-jitsu. And this is a fun one because I've ruined this already for Naki. Uh, so I, I think he's probably going to be like, not answering just because he knows I'm going to go, like, I think you're wrong. <laughs> so, no, do it now. Oh, actually, to give a bit of a background on Nack, uh, he's a PT, and so exercise is his thing. And so for me to then like do what I'm about to do is like real fair. <laughs> Go on, Nack. <laughs> I can't do anything solo, man. You know, jujitsu wise, I just do circuits and stuff. I can't do jujitsu on my own. No, I think that's it. And this is this is why. I don't know I, how I've seen all these videos doing solo. I'm like, I can't, man. I can't do it. <laughs> Well, that's been the whole thing about COVID. It's like there's this, uh, you know, there's people filling geese with old clothes and, yeah. and making dummies and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm like, no, like I will get no benefit out of this at all, ever. I get more benefit from just sitting and thinking. Um, and this is, I think, the the point I want to actually then say is that I don't think there's any home exercises you can do for jujitsu specifically. In that, if you're a hobbyist in jujitsu. And you are just interested in being you know, in jujitsu, enjoying jujitsu, learn jujitsu. It doesn't matter. Like rolling will get you fitter. Uh, being genuine, generally active in something will get you fitter. I don't know. Cycle, lift some weights, go for a run. Just have a more uh, healthy body will always be better for you. After yeah. that, couldn't care less. Um, I think the important part about jujitsu is that if you were to take away, like, so anyone who, uh, I don't know, is older than 15 would have heard of The Matrix. That, that film's like 23 years old. I know, man. I was looking at some films the other day and I'm like, these films are that old. Like, I was looking for Casino Royale, man. It was 2006. I'm like, Dude, yo! That's nuts, isn't it? Like, Matrix is 23 years old. Wow. There, there are kids who are, like, finishing university <laughs> they don't know what the matrix is. Born when that came out, that makes me feel old as shit. Yeah, and I'm not that old, but that's that's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> at least like 80s films, you could tell they were old because they're like you know those the CGI looked like something done on like a NES, but <laughs> like, you know Matrix looked at least a little bit convincing, uh, and that's why it's like getting hard. Like you could put the Matrix and like later MCU films side by side and think they're pretty on par of each other. Like, but you couldn't take the, the the matrix of a film that came like 23 years earlier and say, oh yeah, they're definitely like- Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you um, mean. Yeah, so anyway, um, with regards to most, mar- some martial arts, not most martial arts, but um, 
ones that require like excessive uh, dexterity, flexibility, uh, or uh, gymnastics or other things like that that require like a high level of physicality. I don't think you could you could download into your head matrix style um, those things and actually be able to do them. You couldn't like download gymnastics into your head and then go out and do it because you just jump on your own head and die. Uh, yeah. Jiu-jitsu is different. I know jujitsu. Uh, I think you could download jujitsu into your head, matrix style, and go do it at a really high level without actually adding the physicality. So then going, you know, circling back around to this idea of home exercises. I think there aren't any. I think as long as you can um, kind of tap into this, this way of understanding jujitsu, uh, by like watching all this information that's out there and, and getting a deeper understanding of it that way. I don't think it matters. I, I think you could easily get better jujitsu. I don't think you need exercises to do it. I think you just like, don't be a slob. I think it would be the, <laughs> uh, the best home exercise. Just do something. Yeah, do something. Um, yeah, I think jujitsu is quite unique in that. I think you could actually become very good at it without needing... Um, any sort of extra physicality. I mean, physicality will always make you better, but that's if you're going to be a competitor. If you're just interested in actually learning jujitsu, I don't think it matters. If you're going to like become a competitor, go do sprint work, go lift heavy, go do yeah. Olympic lifts, um, join a gym, get a PT, like maybe Naki who understands jujitsu. Um, <laughs> I traveled to Stoke on Trent. Uh, but in general, no, I think for the average person, just understand jujitsu better. Like, yeah. think more about it, work your brain more. Um, goes on to the next part. How many hours a day? Obviously, before the world turned to horrific shit. Um, how many hours a day did you spend thinking or practicing jujitsu? I can't put a number on it, but I'm always thinking about jujitsu. So. This is, a, this is quite quite odd. This was like you listened to the Johnny Buck episode, didn't you? Yeah. Like he, he like said the exact same thing. The second he walks out the gym, he just doesn't care about jujitsu or MMA at all. And I was like, huh, I'm not alone. That's interesting. <laughs> well, no, I don't. I don't watch any jujitsu. Um, all right. I, I get if it comes up on like you know through through targeted uh, interests on like Instagram or Facebook or something. Like that. I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. Well, why is he upside down? Um, I watched some bit then, but to actually go out and watch matches and stuff, I'm not, I'm not that much into it. <laughs> Strange. Um, <laughs> um, but that's probably because teaching and rolling three hours every evening, and then doing three, four, five hours of privates per day. I think when you get to about eight hours of jujitsu. <laughs> it's and then, then you're also trying to write jujitsu videos and think about what things to teach on jujitsu videos and then you know now these days jujitsu podcasts and stuff <laughs> i think to say that i don't think about jujitsu outside of the gym i think is healthy for me because <laughs> at the, the the current eight to ten hours um accidentally thinking about jujitsu <laughs> isn't like I don't need more <laughs> at all. Would you agree? Because I know like you, you were teaching privates and stuff and doing your own classes in the gym. And the fact that you actually go away and like watch videos as well. I'm like, how? <laughs> study, man, study. You got to watch, you know, what's going how? on. How is your brain not falling out? Yeah, sometimes, man, I don't know. I, I try to switch off, but I can't sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think that's one of the interesting things. I think once jujitsu kind of seeps into your soul, like it's hard to like not do anything that doesn't involve jujitsu. Like, it was, like eating's a big one. Um, like it changes. I, I enjoy food. I enjoy cooking. I enjoy uh, the taste of food. But I'm also thinking, right, I need to make sure my weight is fine for jujitsu. Yeah. Um, or like if I'm thinking about exercise, I'm like, will this actually, like, I'm enjoying this exercise and keeping physically fit, but will this actually help my jujitsu as well? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like climbing, I was like, Oh damn! I could like my grips getting better for jujitsu. 
and <laughs> um like gymnastics when i took that off like sacking all oh, like you know i'm keeping relatively fit for jujitsu so said so i don't think about it a lot outside the gym i think at a certain point i don't think you can avoid it but yeah i have I mean, carry on your life kind of like revolves around it man like everything you do is is my bed jujitsu gonna get better is my yeah fighting well, like, gonna get d- better <laughs> you dress in like jujitsu clothes i mean I was about to make a point that I don't wear a lot of jujitsu clothes outside the gym. And as, as I was about to say that, I was about to like rise up slightly and realize I was wearing like a grapple fest t shirt. So that's a lie. I do wear lots of jujitsu clothes outside the gym. But now I actually have black belt, like the traditional, I've, I've now adopted the traditional look of the black belt, which is uh, shorts and flip flops from like every month that doesn't end in Ueri. Uh, <laughs> So from February onwards, it's it's shorts and flip flop season <laughs> up until like December. So that's the, the the attire of the black belt. Yeah, I think it goes into everything you do eventually, doesn't it? Yeah, can't avoid it. Um, going on to that then, because you actually watch jujitsu and I don't. Okay, I kind of did. Um, question was, who's your who are your favorite competitors to watch? Um, I like watching uh, Lachlan Giles. Uh, yes. And the, the people I'll mention, you'll know why. I like watching Art Luger Tarza. So uh, I like watching Dan Strauss. Hmm. Um, and uh, I like watching uh, them guys mainly because obviously we you know we roll with them. And I'm like, you know, it's interesting to see, you know, what they're doing. And I speak to them now hmm. and again as well. Um, other than that, I like watching Gary Tone. And I think he's, he's the He's one of the most entertaining guys in jiu-jitsu. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, Fionn, De- uh, what's her name? Fionn, is it Davies? The yeah, well yeah. skill. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. Her, her jiu-jitsu is first class, man. Oh, like, God, she, yeah. She's amazing. Well, um, I said, like, I haven't watched jiu-jitsu. I, I went to like, Polaris and stuff like that. I used to go to all the Polarises. So. Yeah, we used to watch the Polarises yeah. together, didn't we? Yeah, well, I used to go to them as well, so, like, yeah. To say, like, I don't watch jiu-jitsu outside jiu-jitsu. Like, I don't specifically go out of my way to just watch individual matches, like on flow grappling, but I definitely watch shows if I can. <laughs> so these are all <laughs> lies. That's all I'm doing is lying on these podcasts. Um, yeah. This comes back to you, doesn't it? It all comes back to you. <laughs> I was always a fan of watching Hafa. Like, oh, yeah, so I, I know, know you're like, a yeah, that kind of like, Hafa fan. Like, dexterity of movement uh, yeah. or, like, inventiveness to watch. of movement. He is slick to watch. Or like Ryan as well, Ryan Hall. Um, yeah. I think this is, again, something I kind of, I think I said something, oh, white belt toolbox. This can go back in the toolbox. This idea of uh, um, play, as in, uh, I'm, I'm going to steal Christian's thing on this, Christian Graugotz. He did a really good like piece on play. Um, I think once you kind of, Oh, I think actually might just go into a, a further idea about relaxation. Oh, I'm reading all my ideas on the on the screen. I'm like, damn, it's all kind of linked together. Um, I think getting over the idea of I have to win and being able to play, I think should definitely be in that white belt toolbox because you see jujitsu and you see violence. You see uh, that's all that's happening. People getting hurt, people getting like fucked up and tapping. Um, but I think one of the most important parts to actually keep in mind is, and, and to keep it like, so it doesn't rot your brain and make you an angry person is the <laughs> idea of play as in the best jujitsu I've ever done is when I've just gone, Hmm, I wonder if this will work. <laughs> and like, I love, it's a dance, like jujitsu is dancing for me as in, and this is kind of maybe goes back into this, like watching Hafa. Like the way he moves, like there's no way that he was just shown that or anything like that. He played to have figured that out. Like, I think that's super important. I think you need to have that in your head from day one. That this is yeah. play. Don't be a dick. This is play. This is a dance. And the more you can make it like that, the more fluid your jujitsu will be. And this is a comment like, um, definitely white belt toolboxes. Uh, I'm gonna have to write these ideas down. Can you send me? I, Actually, no, I say that. Like, I can just <laughs> listen to this again. But yeah. I was going to say, like, send me your ideas after us, make sure I've missed out. Yeah, yeah, I'll pass them. I'm going to definitely make one on the play. Play, 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 play. Like, yeah. 
be inventive, be like extravagant, you know, be, be, create a persona of your jujitsu. It's, it's, make it theatrical if you want to. And the more you do that, the more fluid your jujitsu will be. Um, because if you, if you're very, uh, sharp with your movements, because you're like, I must win every exchange, like, <laughs> especially at wide, but it's very stunted and like you don't develop that kind of fluidity of movement. I remember that I mentioned this before watching you at Blue Belt. Like you had play very early on. And that's why you like you're like you're like a ballerina, like an <laughs> angry ballerina when you roll. Like and you have been since you were a blue belt. And this is why again it's terrifying. Like I always say you always move like a silverback gorilla. Like you just have such a fluidity to it. But I think that's because you played from like a really early on. Like you've just Yeah, gone, I've, I've do, I play all endurance. the time, man. I'm just playing all the time. I know that like, I think that's super important as well. Like you have, you have that mentality from the beginning, but most people haven't. And no. you can tell the people who haven't because their jujitsu is really stunted. Yeah. Like, like their movements are really jagged and all over the place. And I'm just like, they're going in the right direction, but like very like grunty and stoppy and starting. Mm. But like you think of any black belt, they're very fluid with their movements. How could you incorporate that kind of fluidity into being a white belt? Play. Yeah. Play enjoy movement make it dance and find drills and partners that allow you to do that i think that yeah. that should be just as important in rolling and having those roles as the murder to the death ones and it's amazing that you don't actually get chance to actually do play movements until you're a higher belt fighting less skilled people and you can just like be an asshole with it <laughs> i think if you could actually have those partners from earlier on, I think your jiu-jitsu would get better faster. I think this yeah. is something that definitely I need to talk about more. And I would definitely uh, canonize in the video. Um, but yeah, that's because of Hafa. Hafa just did that. I was like, damn. Yeah. Damn, that needs to be a part of it. Um, I love watching JT Torres at the moment, man. His like, stand-up passing, his top pressure is it's amazing to watch. Yeah. Yeah, but again, it's probably the same thing that like, that fluidity, yeah, and and inventiveness, and I think play is the only way of getting that sometimes. Um, this goes on to the next question then. Again, I kind of ruined this for Naki before asking before we started recording. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> breathing, breathing exercises. Oh yes, breathing. Yeah. What yeah, breathing yeah. exercises would you recommend? Oh man, it's like I've said with the warm up, but you've got to find it yourself. Like you'll find places where you can chill. You'll find places where you've got to explode. Because at the end of the day, it goes back to it being a sport. It's stop start. It's like a short period of st strong exertion with a, a bit of rest, um, and you'll find places where you can breathe. Um, I, I think that again should go into the white belt toolbox. Yeah, hundred percent. I remember like being in a gym. Uh, uh, years ago, I think it was purple about the time, and one of the white, like the kind of reg, like, it knew me ish in the gym, and uh, a purple belt sat next to me, like mid rolling, like around a round off. He said, "What advice could you give me?" I was like, "Relax, but it's going to take you five years to understand what the hell I just said." <laughs> and this black belt coach started laughing. It was like, "Yeah, pretty much." <laughs> um, and I think those two things are very interlinked. Um, yeah. When it comes to breathing, I don't think there's specific breathing exercises you can do. I think you can like there's breathing exercises like try and like from a physical standpoint, like expand your rib cage. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, I'm not sure if you knew this, Naki, but did you know? Did you know? I was a classically trained singer when I was younger. Not that much younger, but in my in my early twenties. I remember you telling me about it once when we were on our yeah. way to a gym somewhere. Daft as it sounds. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Maybe you soon will. But the breathing exercises of that about how to expand your rib cage, it wasn't like a like a like mamby pamby holistic, you know, find your chi kind of thing. It was like, no, just <laughs> expand your damn rib cage and make your diaphragm work better kind of exercises. But I don't really use those outside in jujitsu like i do it for like i don't know to to make my rib cage feel better because I, I um it gets crushed a lot uh, <laughs> but i think um in actually jujitsu i think when it comes to breathing i think again why about toolbox finding the trenches where you're okay 
Like knowing that you're not always in danger. And I think when you understand that and that you can chill in those spaces, or not just from a defensive point of view, but from an offensive point of view, like being on top, like you don't have to breathe as much if you're on top. Um, getting control and holding control or being on the bottom and knowing when like, you're no longer in threat. Because I think that's one thing, again, when, with white belts and earlier people in jiu-jitsu is there's a constant pace it's like, like there's a BPM, like that. Like it's a constant beep, 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 and they're just going at the <laughs> same rate. Um, you watch black belts, especially like, you know, uh, regular kind of competition black belts. Uh, there's explosions of movement, like you said, and they're resting in between those explosions of movement. It's like short, sharp movements. It's not just like a constant rate. Um, and I think having that as a white belt, understand that, you know, don't just say relax, because that means fuck all. Mm. Um, like, relax, relax. What do you mean? Yeah. You mean me in the face. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there you can't relax. Um, <laughs> but like, no, like, what is the relax? What is breathing? It's like, there are going to be places, um, explain where these, a lot of these places are from experience, where you're okay. Like, the, like the, going back to that defend everything, like, you know, what is control, what is defense? You're okay here. You're not dying. Like, it hurts a little bit. You can breathe. Relax. Save your energy. Um, know when to move. Know when to go to the next trench. I think that's, like, maybe year one toolbox stuff. Yeah. Um, I think then breathing will become more natural. Um, so I don't think that's a specific exercise you can do for it. But, again, it all comes down to uh, uh, jiu-jitsu intelligence. Yeah. Downloading from the matrix. <laughs> um, hmm. Last one. Unless we start shooting shit. Uh, what trip? You because you play a lot of these, especially like uh, Running Man, Hawkins, or the or the regular defensive pre stuff. Um, what tricks and tips have you got for transitions? For transitions, oh, yeah. um, I, you know, my favorite is always the jab cross uh, and everything I do, I always set it up like it just goes from a build on levels. So depending on who I'm rolling with, I'll do a one, two. If it works, it's good. If it doesn't, then I'll have to do like a one, one, two, or then, you know, it's always faking, uh, you know, I'll treat it like boxing. I do now when I'm on the bottom, like I got to fake, fake, and then go fake, fake, and then go. If you can get in that mindset, I think you're, a running man transition game will get a lot better. I think that's um, the, the, I think, yeah, bang on. It's, um, so explain the idea of a jab cross to anyone like listen to this for the first time. And I said earlier in the white belt, white belt toolbox, there's always an opposite movement to what you're doing. If you're going one way, you can go the other way. Yeah. If you can research and figure out how you're supposed to, there's always another way. If every left hand, there's a right hand punch. And initially, like when you're first starting out, you just have a jab. You just go in one way, you become very predictable and that gets shut down. Eventually, then you want to develop a jab cross. So you can take them one way, then go the other way. That's fine. Like Naki just said, then you start making combos. Like I think this is then the tricks with the transitions of uh, these kind of movement defensive positions is that you have to start developing combos. You have to yeah. start understanding where your jabs and your crosses are and be able to then play with them like and the only way of doing that is then i think like having those kind of pad work drills not actual pad work drills <laughs> but that this idea that people like set you up combos so that you can then just like drill on so it's not dead drilling again i think that's gonna be another important one not necessarily yeah. maybe that goes in the white belt toolbox I should have. I should have had like a pen next to me because it should have been written. <laughs> I think everything we talk about today goes into the white belt toolbox. <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna have to listen to this podcast again. I'm gonna have to listen to like my voice again, and your <laughs> and, like. Don't mind your voice, but this. Uh, I'm gonna have to listen to this whole thing again and figure out where we left all these nuggets of information. And how long are we into this now? Like an hour and a bit. Something like Dude, that. <laughs> it's always like an hour and the stuff of information I've got to listen to again. <laughs> like, oh. That's why I enjoy these Reap the Week episodes because we come in with ideas and then like they're bouncing off each other. Oh shit, shit, we could add this. Yeah. 
and then we forget him because we hid him inside one of these <laughs> <laughs> and nothing ever comes of it. It's just empty promises. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, man, I'm glad I've got some notes left over because it's like, this is going to be like a 10 video series. Actually, speaking to someone earlier, they said like, wow, you put out a lot of content. Are you going to run out of stuff? I hope I didn't know he's going to listen to this as well. So like, hi Graham. Um, I was like, I have like so many like things left, like like thirty odd videos at least that I need to record. Um, <laughs> the other thing that kind of limits me is that I have time, like specific time to do it, and then my batteries die and I stop. And I'm like, well, like, you know, I, I start uploading stuff onto the off my camera onto my phone to like edit it um, because I can't afford a, a good laptop. Patreon. Um, <laughs> give me a Mac. Uh, is that what they're called? MacBook, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I went feral long ago. Uh, but yeah, I'm loading onto that. I've only got like eight or nine gig of like spare hard drive to do. And like every video uploads like four gig. So by the time I've like rendered a new version, it's like I've got no space left on my <laughs> phone. So I have to upload it and then do it all over again. I'm like, oh, fuck this. I, I need to figure out a better way of doing this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like 30. And now I've got like 40 videos I need to do because this white belt toolbox has worked out <laughs> really well. Um, I can't get it. Like we did it on this because um, you've added like four or five ideas in that. I was like, oh, shit. Fuck. <laughs> he had it into it. Um I think those things were especially like going back to them because it's like I'm really happy about those. This is like really cheered, well, not cheered me up, but like get me excited. Um, not in that way. Anyone watching on video, it's not that <laughs> way right now. Like, oh, start, man. start throttling myself off camera. This isn't only fans. Um, <laughs> can I edit all this out? No, yeah, I, can't. I, I can't. I can't. I can't be asked okay, to do that kind okay. of shit. Um, editing <laughs> I, just, I just click upload <laughs> um yeah this has made me really excited about like all these kind of things i think this is stuff we do anyway um like it's it's obviously funny just because you know we are from the same gym and so i'm like Naki, what do you think it's like you list off the exact things that i'm gonna say anyway and like in the exact <laughs> same order i'm like oh cool it kind of i've kind of battered it into his brain that hard <laughs> That, like I, I decry, you know, we spent that one episode that like, decrying, saying to people like, you know, you shouldn't be a clone of your coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughing right now. laughs> like, our games um, are different. Our games are completely different now. Oh, completely. Oh, it's so much fun. Like, um, I think that's what makes it really interesting. Is because we both understand like the concepts behind it all. Like we're reading each other's games. Like even if it's like. Um, we're not entirely sure of the new stuff that we're both playing. Yeah. Um, I can, like, I'm looking at your game thinking, I know what he's doing. I haven't seen him do this before, but I know why he's doing it. And I'm then, like doing the maths in my head, like, and how do I upset him now and shut it all down? <laughs> 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 oh, it makes it a lot more fun that way. So I'm like, ah, he's attacking me and crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> I miss rolling. Yeah, I do miss it. Hopefully, hopefully we can come back soon and we can, uh, we can, uh, especially uh, one of the interesting things is that, you know, saying this in the podcast of like um, uh, mentally working through jujitsu, I think is better for you at home than physically doing it. I'd be interested like what the stuff we've come back with, like after spending so long watching and going, hmm, jujitsu. Uh, what we do in the gym now, like now we've got this like deeper kind of like knowledge of it, despite the fact that we haven't played it. Like, it's, mm. it's hard to say like, oh, you get better at jujitsu ju by not doing it. Um, when we actually haven't got the empirical evidence because we haven't got back in the gym and tried it yet. But I'm going to, I'm going to, my hypothesis is it's going to work out for the best. Yeah. Um, uh, that explains rust, to be fair. Like um, if I was to take you, if, if I, heaven forbid, if I was to take you out of jiu-jitsu for like three years as a rough random number, mm. um, I don't think you'd be that much different. I don't, th I think if you're physically fit, 
that wouldn't change the jujitsu. I think it'd just be rust mentally. I think if you could fix the mental rust, nothing will change, even mm. after three years off. Mm. Like, it's I think not so. like you, you, maybe age would affect you. Like you've got like your legs and your back would hurt more. Yeah, but I think the but game wouldn't change. Or less. No, I think you'd just be as good as you were. If you could like find a way of keeping mental rust off over those three yeah. years, even if you physically didn't do it, I think you'd come back at the exact same place you were at. Possibly, yeah. No, probably not mm. progressed, but possibly at the level yeah, of the would leave at. Yeah. Especially after three years. You'd think someone would go backwards in that time. Yeah. Uh, well, we're about to find out when people return to the gym if they've gone backwards after one year off. Um, I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to like uh, <laughs> hospitalize you, you for three years and like <laughs> put put you in a coma and like you can come back in three years' time and like, how has it worked? Well, that wouldn't work anyway because if you were in a coma, like you wouldn't be thinking about jujitsu. Yeah, that's not, I wouldn't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they do think of jujitsu. <laughs> I have no idea. Can't really comment on it. Um, I think we've kind of gone a bit left field on this one, Mac. Well, I, yeah, I know we've gone on a like, big tangent. <laughs> I'm not even high. Like these, I, I, I've been so good. Like big, big. I was going to say brownie points for me. <laughs> <laughs> no brownie points for me. Yeah, no um, brownie points. <laughs> none at all. Uh, maybe it had some sort of a lasting effect on me. Uh, <laughs> drugs are bad. Um, Talking about high, we've had a wedding weird question, aren't we? <laughs> what, what was that? Have we? Have I missed it? The, the, the jujitsu in space from our dear friend Tom. Oh, damn. Yeah, he was definitely high when he asked that question. <laughs> uh, yeah, go for it. I don't know what the question is. This is going to be interesting. Maybe, maybe that's what we should do in the Discord like, in the future, is that you're like the, the question Iser. You, you take the questions and you fire them at me. Um, <laughs> oh, no. On the spot. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's try it. Oh, um, man, he messaged me. He messaged me today as well. He was like, oh, make sure you ask him. Make sure you talk about it. Jiu-Jitsu in space, what would it be like? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it, man. But, you know, it's something we could talk about. Are we talking like on the ISS or are we talking uh, like just in space? Because I'm pretty sure it wouldn't last long. No, I know. I don't, like, I don't know. Unless he means the, the moon void. or something. <laughs> yeah, I guess. if Would it work? I think I've always said like uh, there's so many parts of jiu-jitsu that if you were to take away uh, your your primitive human understanding of what is up and down jiu-jitsu is very much the same and wherever you look at it like if you were to like put jiu-jitsu in space you wouldn't tell the difference between guard and mount yeah <laughs> you'd be turning um, yeah and there'd be no I pressure that way, there'd be no pressure yeah I'd, I'd, I'd be crushed <laughs> not literally because there's no <laughs> but, <laughs> this is what um, i mean like it would be so weird There'd be no pressure, as you said. I couldn't, I couldn't. Dude, I think that that's my like, it's a good job I'm not religious and like <laughs> believe in like hell. Because I'm pretty sure my my version of hell would just be me trying to hold side control in space. Like, and not be able to like crush people. There's me like trying to like, you know, do their ribs in, they're just like being pushed away in the exact same amount. And I'm like, no, There's no, no ground, no ground to push off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No gravity for me to like drive my shoulder through them. And it's just like constant, just like floating through away from me. I'm like, this, that's, that's, yeah. Like, I think a choke would probably be the only thing that would work. Possibly, yeah. Well, that definitely would. I think arm bars and stuff would work in space. You, you're kind of framing, you're, you're pushing against Yeah, you're pushing against them, but yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You're pushing against them to then do But do you need the something. floor to extend if you're lying on your back? Maybe some arm bars would work. I know that, yeah, like one way to took it behind the arm. And yeah, like just use your your arms as well. Like you wouldn't be able to like bridge off something. Yeah, but stacks, no like... stacks. There'd be no stacks. <laughs> oh no, they just go around in circles. Yeah, <laughs> come to think of it, mate, that'd be weird. Dude, maybe maybe like maybe we should do some sort of like after hours episode of this because I think we'll definitely go off on a on like a fucking <laughs> yeah. We right should, now. We should. <laughs> maybe we should do like a like a, a explicit eighteens only one or like just see like I don't know episode. So maybe like episode. 50, if we get that far, it's us just like fucked out of our faces trying to like talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> like just high as balls, just like <laughs> what happens. We'll get Tom on, we'll tell him, come on, mate, it's your question. 
yeah i think i think that's something to, to definitely put in the future if if we have maybe if it, there's like a certain milestone uh if we hit like i don't know uh like like two thousand three thousand four thousand five thousand subscribers on the youtube channel or uh i don't know like 10,000 listens on the on the podcasts uh that's the point where like cool let's do let's do a fucking crazy <laughs> right, let's let's get like wasted and try and do a podcast together um and uh, yeah eddie bravo may may i think i think that's pretty much how you like summon eddie bravo <laughs> you get high <laughs> and just like rant into a camera like his name three times and just appears like yeah. the candy man <laughs> um <laughs> i'm gonna go to bed i think i'm tired yeah. <laughs> anyway um i hope i hope 75 percent of that was useful to anyone listening <laughs> and the final 25 percent is heavily ignored um <laughs> uh yeah, thank you. Uh, this has been the week with uh, El Jefe and the villain, uh, Naki and Chris. Um, tune in next week for, I'm sure, a completely normal, not high at all episode uh, where we'll talk about more jujitsu. If you have ask any questions, please visit the Discord channel, message us individually. I'm sure we respond um, at a price. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for your time, Naki. Yeah, cheers, mate. See you soon. Pleasure, dude. See you in a bit.